2 Samuel 21. Then there was famine in the land in the days of David, three years. All right, we've seen the revolt of Absalom. We've seen the revolt of Sheba, taking care of those. Now we get a famine. And there was famine in the days of David, three years. Year after year, no break. And David inquired the Lord. The Lord answered him, It is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. God controls the weather. Here God has stopped the rain for three years in a famine, no food. Because of Saul. Again, we run to the principle that some people say, Well, my sins will not affect others. Saul has been long dead since 2 Samuel 1. Saul is dead. And we come upon the time that Saul is dead. And here Israel, the nation, is suffering for three years because the bloody house of Saul. And we need to realize that when we deal with sins in our life, it will affect others. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap, and others. You know, the, the story of the Chicago fire, the cow. True or not, if it was true, one cow kicked over a flame or something, and the whole entire city suffered. And it does happen. And the king called the Gibeonites. So there were some left. And we'll read in a, later in the chapter what this zeal of Saul was. So we'll study it then. And said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but a remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them. So Joshua 9.3 goes all the way back to Joshua. 9-3. In chapter 9, the giving nights, what they do is they get afraid of God. Here comes Israel. They're going to kill us all. And what they do is they get dressed up in old clothes. They get old uh, shoes, old wine bottles. And they get the moldy bread and fear before Joshua. And pretend to be someone else. And in verse 3. When the inhabitants of Gibeah heard that Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai. They did work willingly. Willingly. And went and made as if they had been ambassadors. And took old sacks upon their asses. And wine bottles old and, wine bottles old and ran. And bound them up. And old shoes and clotted upon their feet. And old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto the camp of Gilgal. And said unto him and to the men of Israel. <clears throat> we come from a far country. Why? Now therefore make a league with us. And what we'll see now in verse 21. Same chapter. Joshua 9, 21. And the princes said unto him. Let them live. But let them be as hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation as the princes had promised them. So here is spoken up. Keep these people alive. Now, what had happened? Joshua and the, the leaders of the land of Israel had made an oath to them. They had received their present. They had received the fact that they're from a far country. And I'm just trying to find it here. In verse 11, chapter 9, Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go and meet them, and say unto them, We are thy, we are your servants. Therefore now make a league with us. This our bread we took hot, this is all lie, for our provision, out of our houses on the day that we came forth a lie, to go unto you, but now, behold, it's dry and it's moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled were new, why? And behold, they were they be rent, 
And these, our garments and our shoes, are become old by reason of very long journey. And the men of Israel, the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel of the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them and let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And then later on they find out that they've been deceived. But there's an oath of God by Joshua to those men. And the leaders of the nation of Israel said, well, we're going to make them drawers of water. What they're going to do is they're going to get our wood. They're going to get our water for the uh, tabernacle. And in chapter 21 of 2 Samuel, it says, And Saul sought to slay them in his zeal. First time that word shows up, zeal. To the children of Israel and Judah, not to God. So Saul is thinking, hey, these people are not us. And God said, when you go in the land, completely wipe them out. You can't wipe them out. They've been oathed by God, by Joshua. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonite, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement? I need to make an atonement. There's something wrong here. There needs to be a payment that ye may that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord. Now, just real quickly, the verse 14, the inheritance. At the end of verse 14, God was entreated for the land. That inheritance is the land. And there's something wrong with the land because the sins of of uh, Saul. And in verse 4, the given night said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul. We're not going to take no money. God doesn't take any money when it comes to atonement. Nor of his house. We don't want anything of his house. Neither for us shalt thou, that's important, thou kill any man in Israel. Now look at verse 6. Let, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them. So the conversation of David is, we want Saul's sons. You're not to kill them. So you can be an enemy of God, your, your, your Lord, your Savior of this land. But we will slay them. The atonement that Saul has done to us will not be done by you, David. It will be done by us because it was done to us. And back to verse 4, we will have no silver nor gold of Saul, but of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, what ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, the man that consumed us, Saul, here, here it is. And that devised, that's the first time that word shows up, against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. That's the zeal of Saul. He wanted them all the Gibeonites. He wanted them dead and gone. And yet, they're protected by God. That is the oath of God. You say, well, it's a bad oath. You said it was an oath that they did not seek God still. It's an oath of God, and God is protecting these Gibeonites years and years and years later. And the fact is that they have been having an oath of God on them by Joshua, and someone tried to kill them all. God says, I'm giving you three, three years of rain without rain. I am giving you three years of famine, and I'm going to give the opportunity for my king to say, what do you guys want? They're going to want the sons of Saul. He killed, and he did kill some of the given knights, so the blood of Saul's family. Again, now his family's reaping Saul's sins. Years and years and years later, oh, everything is humping the door. No, death is at the door. The man that consumed us, that devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us. We will hang, not you, David, we will hang them up unto the Lord, Jehovah, the Gibeonites. 
We want seven of his sons, and we will we will put them, we will hang them, we will kill them, unto God. Now that's kind of interesting because God does not want the sacrifice of men. And yet, how many men have been sacrificed of the Gibeonites? And the law said to Noah, the law said in the law, and the law said in the church age, if any man shed any man's blood, then his blood shall be shamed, slain, excuse me. He said, well, Saul's dead. Why is his sons, the only possibility I could think of, his sons were part of it too. And they're still living. That's the only thing I could think. Other than that, I don't know. And the seven, sons, the seven men of his sons be delivered unto us. We will hang them up unto the Lord and give them of Saul. That's where Saul was. In his hometown. Whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. Now there is Mephibosheth being spared again. Here comes the penalty of death and blood and sin. The wages of sin is death. King says, no, not you, Mephibosheth. Relax. You're mine. Only thing would happen to the Christian is, yeah, we will die. Wages of sin is death is written to Christian. But then, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So Mephibosheth is spared. The son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. Now notice son. He's actually grandson of Saul, but still listed as son. Because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So we see another oath in chapter 21. There was an oath of, of Joshua and the Gibeonites. And Saul broke that oath, tried to break that oath. Here's an oath between David and Jonathan before Jonathan's death. If somebody in Jonathan's family, David would show love and care. That love and care is upon Mephibosheth. That oath is being kept. Saul violated an oath. And yet King David is keeping an oath. Saul was wicked in his ways, would not do what was prescribed by God. David is right. And will do what is prescribed by God. Because the Lord's oath was between them. Between David and Jonathan. The son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rith Rithpa. The daughter of Ai. Whom she bare unto Saul. So these are two sons of Saul. His wife Ai. And armor and I. And myth, myth, Blibosheth, and the five sons of Micah, the daughter of Saul, that's David's wife, who she brought up for Adrui, the son of Berzui, and Myth Bethelite. That's a verse for a tongue twister. Can't say that five times. All right, so here's the deal people have problems with this verse. 1 Samuel 18, 19. We'll look at the problem, but there is no problem. 1 Samuel 18, you don't, they don't read English. 1 Samuel 18, 19. Eighteen nine. but it came to pass at the time when Merarba, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adrilei, the Methodite, the wife. All right, so Saul's daughter, Merab Meraba, was supposed to be given to David, but instead it was given to Adrilei. All right, so here is a husband and wife, Meraba, more say the name more is going to be, and Adrilei. Now over here, it says that Amorai and Myth, boy, oh, these are some challenging names, Bishadith, and the five sons of Micah, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for 
of Judah. Right, there's the one we just mentioned in 1 Samuel 18, 19. The son of Berzai. Adriai and Berzai have children. Michael brings them up for them. Michael, the daughter of whom she brought up. I'm not going to read their names again. I can't. Morari and Mathif, whatever his name is. She brings up her niece. I mean, there's, yeah. She brings up her nephews for her sister, Adrilai. Here's my children. Will you watch them? Sure. Because the other problem lies, 2 Samuel 6.23. 2 Samuel 6.23. Some of these names get hard. Now, here's the problem. They don't know how to read. 2 Samuel 6.23 Therefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Well, see that? How can these two boys be her son in 21.8? They're not. They are her sister's sons. There's no problem with that. Whom she brought up for a drill eye. No problem. Read the English. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites. So, two of them are son sons, and five of them are grandsons, which are still gonna be sons. Seven. And he delivered them unto the hands of the Gibeonites. Here they are. And they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. That's Jehovah, all capitals. And they fell all seven together. They hanged them. And were put to death in the days of harvest. In the first days, in the beginning of the barley harvest. You'll see that in Ruth 2, that barley harvest. Harvest. It is spring in Abed. You'll see that in Exodus 23.15. So this is the first time of the year. This is the first month. This is the harvest. Barley harvest is supposed to be coming. Problem. There's been three years of famine. You're not going to get no barley. You're not going to get no bread. And Rizba, the daughter of Aiah, took sackcloth and spread it for her upon the rock. Now, there's a rock. There's these rocks. There's the rock. It's a rock above all the rocks in the area. From the beginning of the harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven. So even in a famine, there is crops growing. Now there hasn't been any rain. How did God show that what happened now among the Gibeonites? Slain Saul's seven sons. That God said, okay, I approve of that. That atonement now has been settled. From the beginning of the harvest. Unto water dropped. There's been no rain for three years. And when they hang up the sons. And kill them. After that, there's a time when it starts raining. And when God brings that rain to at the end of the three years, at the slain of Saul's son, God says, I approve of that. The water dropped upon them out of heaven and suffered neither the birds or the of the air to be yeah, Suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day. Here comes the vultures, the scavengers. They're going to eat, pick the meat. No, she's driving them off. Abraham did that with a sacrifice. When he had that sacrifice and the birds came, he flees them off. By day. Nor the beasts of the field by night. At night and day, she's working to protect those, ch those children of Saul. She's making sure the animals get, don't get to them. She makes sure those bodies are staying intact. 
Now, we're not under the law here of the given nights. Because the law said, curse of he to hang us on the tree, and by the nightfall, you're to take those bodies down off the tree. David didn't do this. Israelites didn't do this. The heathen, the Gibbonites did it. So don't go running, oh, the law says they weren't supposed to be there. They were there for days, night and day. But the Gibbonites are not under the law. The famine was in 29.1. Now rain shows up. And it was told David what Rizba, the daughter of Ai, the concubine, <laughs> there's that concubine, it's a wife of Saul, had done. And that's the end of the story of those, of those seven sons. David, Rizba, she's out there protecting the bodies. Okay, so we got rain. God is pleased. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jabeth Gilead. And remember when we ended 1 Samuel. The day the Philistines had come. And taken the bodies. Of Saul and Jonathan. And his sons that were with him. And they beheaded them. And they nailed the bodies to the wall. And they put the heads. In the house of Dagon. And in their house of God. Say, Look at the victory like they did with Samson. They made Samson play sport. Amongst their gods. And the men of Jabeth Gilead. Jabez Gilead came in and rescued those bodies and brought those bodies into the land of Israel and buried them. But they're not home. The bodies are not where they should be. David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, which the men of Jabez Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Bethshen, where the Philistines had hanged them, hanged them on a wall. When the Philistines had slain Saul in Gil Gilboa, 1 Samuel 31. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son. And they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, buried they in the country of Benjamin and Zelah, so they weren't buried in the proper land. In the sepulcher of Kish, his father, the family plot, and they perform all that the king commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. So there was two problems here. The Gibeonites had been violated by an oath of God that, that Saul was going to kill them all by the great zeal. Though he was wicked and though he was vile, the king had not been buried with his family. He's been out of place all these years. So David speaks to the given and I said, what must we do to make the atonement? And the seven sons, grandsons, five of them, are hung up by the given nights, but no one of Israel. And David goes and takes the bones and moves them to the proper burying place. And God says, okay, I like that. And the rain came. And we're going to stop right there, pick up another war coming up.